Well, hello everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Today is February 11th, 2021. We are in week 47 of our Thursday night Bible study, and I hope you are doing well. Uh, it's my prayer that uh, this would offer you some uh, encouragement and find you at peace. And even during times that are around us, uh, it's just absolutely crazy that we find ourselves in this place. Yes, I am not in the shed, Mary. You were right on your Facebook post that Carol showed me. Or I think that was Instagram. I think I saw that. But there is a little bit of an echo in here. And it's kind of kind of weird for me, so I'm going to try to just tune that part of this out. But yes, I am in a new place. And um, one of my check-ins, things that I wanted to talk to you today about before we get started is uh, Kyle and Maddie and Paisley have closed on their house. Uh, they are on Lane Street in Kannapolis, North Carolina, and they bought a, a small brick house, uh, three bedrooms, got a garage and an extra area in the back. And, you know, it, we got them all moved in and everything safely made it over, even though I lost a box on the way, uh, fell off and in, into a ditch. And Carol had to uh, fend off a Rottweiler to get, get the box out of the ditch, <laughs> which is a funny story. And... Uh, we made everything over to the house, and then we had the infamous box missing we were looking for that had Kyle's PlayStation and a bunch of other stuff in it, and we just figured maybe that fell off, but I know for a fact, I stood firm knowing that that box made it, and comes to find out it was in the closet under some socks, so I'm glad that the, that box was found. But yes, they are in their new home, and the Rebuild Project, we're going to be talking a lot about that today. Uh, the Rebuild Project is actually, this is Kyle's old room. And he's lived in almost every room in the house up until he left, but uh, this room needed some TLC and, you know, it's just one of those things that uh, there's not a lot of stuff in here now. Like there's a lot of, there's a big echo in the home, which is really weird. And I was telling my dad just the other day and, and Carol that, you know, I, I like that they have moved out, but I don't love it. But then again, I love that they moved out, but I don't like it. I think I said that correctly, but I, I just don't know how I feel about it just yet. I mean, Carol and I sat here the other night, and we were just by ourselves. I mean, it was just quiet, you know, and then we sat across from the table from each other, and it's like, okay, what do we talk about? You know, it's just uh, something totally weird. This new chapter is so different. I was telling everybody at work this story as well, and, uh, you know, somebody's got to lead the way. Somebody has went before you, so when I was talking to my dad about this. I mean, he knew exactly what I was talking about and how, how I feel because he's been in that same spot and many of you have as well. So congrats to uh, Kyle, Maddie, and Paisley. Uh, best wishes and many prayers and happy dreams and all good stuff coming from, from where you guys are at. And being a homeowner, man, there's, you take some pride in that kind of stuff. And you know, it's like this, like this room here, you know what I mean? We went and got a rug today for it and filled it up with some little stuff. And I actually have a space now that I can actually sit down. Uh, working from home, all I have was this little spot on the kitchen counter where I stood. And that was the only place I had unless I was sitting at the table. But now I've got actually my own little space here, which Carol's making fun of me of. Because I can see her right over there. And she goofs off a lot. She does. But anyway, um, I'm excited. You know, this is uh, hard work. But it's work that you can take pride in, and that's one of the things that um, this chapter of Nehemiah that we're going to be talking about tonight is going to have a lot to say about that, is taking pride in your work. Um, prayers for my dad and for Gail, uh, Brandy and her roommate Molly, uh, both tested uh, positive uh, for COVID. They're not feeling great. They're not feeling bad, bad, but they're not feeling great. Uh, Brandy's mom and dad... Um, I think have fully recovered. They're feeling somewhat better now after being tested positive for COVID a couple weeks back. So I'm glad to hear that they're doing much better. So Brandy, Molly, we're praying for you. I already told you if you needed something, I'd swing by and, and drop it off. But I uh, might step into the yard or the, or the driveway, but that's about as far as I get. Um, Pedro, uh, I hope you're feeling better. I know you probably won't see this, but we're praying for you. Uh, Pedro was our neighbor that uh, the reason why we are in quarantine this week um, it's just one of those things that he came down after Paisley's party with it. So that was a little close. Sabrina, I hope you're continuing to feel good and stay negative on that. Um, my dad did have uh, an eye doctor's appointment earlier this week. Be praying for, for his eyes. He's got some extra drops now after his cataract surgery. So something's not healing up just perfectly the way they, they would want it. So be praying for my dad for that. Uh, Alex, my dad too. Dad just got over this, but 
Um, his granddaughter, my niece, Alex and her boyfriends got the stomach flu. Uh, Alex was actually in the hospital yesterday and my dad and my brother went and picked her up uh, last night to, to get her home. So I hope you guys are feeling a lot better. So we'll keep washing your hands, not only for COVID, not only for the flu, not only for the Spanish flu, measles, whatever else that you want, and germs, but we don't want the stomach flu. That, that's horrible. It's been a few years since I've had it. So I want to keep that streak going. Um, also, a uh, shout out to uh, Nicole. I know you've been watching these past couple messages and we're praying for you for a good start back to school. Uh, it's tough being a teacher nowadays. Donna, um, Aaron, I, I don't know if you guys are still tuning in on this, but um, it's definitely something that is, is hard to adjust to. I know me being in the College of Ed, there's teachers all around me. And yeah, it's, it's a struggle, not only for the students, but the teachers and administrators as well. Um, one more shout out. We got uh, Maddie's uh, mom uh, had knee replacement surgery last week, so she's feeling much better. She was home, I think, two days after that. Uh, Carol had dropped her, her and, and her husband a, a meal off last night, and she seemed to be doing very well, so I'm grateful for that. Uh, also, one more shout out to uh, one of my former students of a long time ago, Olivia Dunn. Um, she is a little bit younger than Kyle, and she was part of a church plant and moved to Nashville after she graduated state. And, you know, that it's just being a missionary, you're a volunteer, you go on with the church, you end up in Nashville, a city where you don't really know anybody, but your church family and your church team. Uh, special shout out for you guys to for a successful church plant there and for God to do something just absolutely amazing in all of Nashville, a section of Nashville. I don't care if it's just a community that's in Nashville or even outside of Nashville. I mean, I think it's just great that Olivia took the chance to go and do something great for God. And it's just a just an awesome thing to do. Uh, continued prayers for Maddie. She's looking for work and she's got school starting next Monday. So we're going to be praying for that. So much waited. I have not said much about this, but you know, some of you made comments about my video last week about how it ended, and it was uh, it ended very differently, didn't it? Did it not? Uh, it was one of those things that I was in my shed, I had the door shut, and uh, Carol came in. And I remember I, I looked up and Carol was sitting there, and I, I said yes, and she said, "There's a guy at the door." And I'm like, "What do you mean? There's a guy at the door?" Okay, we got to pray. I mean, she was absolutely freaked out. Now. I'm not saying that if you're an Asian man with a hat thing, a beanie on your hat, driving a giant Mercedes, and you're not leaving, you're probably here for a reason, okay? Uh, dogs are barking. I got to go find out. I cut the message short. I had to run out because Carol was absolutely, I don't want to say terrified, but she, she had some concern on her, on her face. And what it comes to find out is that Kyle sold uh, something on Facebook Marketplace, and the guy was here to pick it up, so... Either I forgot, uh, <clears throat> I lost track of time, or he forgot to tell me. I don't know. It was one of those things. So we did the thing. He, the guy paid me. He took the product in, and away he went. So everything was good. So I apologize for ending a message short last week. I have to say it was kind of funny looking back at it. You know, just didn't even finish the prayer. Just ran out the door. But, hey, it is what it is. If this is not live, it's not live, right? There we go. So with that, uh, I don't know why I'm yelling. It's a big echo in here. But anyway, let's let's pray and we'll get this thing started, okay? Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for new space. We thank you for new beginnings like Olivia is doing in Nashville with her church plant, Lord. And we thank you for the courage to be able to step in and go and listen to your voice and follow you to wherever that may go. Lord, we have a lot of prayer requests that have been lifted up, even the ones that we didn't mention, that, that cannot be mentioned, won't be mentioned. Lord, we lift those up. You already know the need before we even mention it, Lord, and we thank you for that. We love the, the fact that we are in Nehemiah. We love learning about his life and his leadership and what, God, you were doing in this time because it applies to us now. And Lord, open our ears, open our eyes, and open our hearts to your word. And may they fall in special places and in special things. Lord, we love you. We trust you. We know the world is struggling right now. There's so much things that are going on in the media and in our nation and in the world. And Lord, help us just focus the next half hour on you and what your word has got to say for us today. Lord, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
All right, Nehemiah 3. If you've been with me the last couple of weeks, uh, we went through uh, Nehemiah 1, Nehemiah 2, and obviously Nehemiah 3 is uh, all next. Um, but I'm going to switch gears on you just a little bit because i got to keep you on your toes. See, Nehemiah 3, I want you to go after this, sometime this week, sometime in your quiet time, and I want you to read chapter 3 because we're not really going to study chapter 3. But I do have this to say. Nehemiah 3 is all about work. Right, that is right. I said that correctly. It's all about work. We learned in this past season of time uh, under the previous leadership of this nation, hard work works. And it's true. Hard work works. We will never get ahead or even even. We will never even get even leaning on someone else or on the government. This big push that we have right now of leaning on the government because we have to or we should or we'll just give you this stuff for free is never going to help us. You're never going to take pride in anything that the government gives you or what you have because you always are going to want more. It's in, our, it's in our spirit to go and do. God says good things about work. He doesn't want us to be lazy. Chapter 3 is all about hard work. Hard work works. The kingdom of God and Jerusalem was in rubble. And Nehemiah was on the rebuild project. And God, in chapter 3, is the general contractor. He is the project manager for this mission rebuild. Because Nehemiah was a great leader, a leader by example. He was not spiritual enough to get his hands dirty. And we know how pastors sometimes do that, right? We're the spiritual ones, so I can't get in the ditch or build this or do that, right? I'll let you guys do that. I'm the pastor, so... That's another whole story. I'm all about getting there and getting dirty and getting this thing done. Nehemiah was also enthusiastic and he was hardworking. And there are over 50 names in chapter 3 of individuals recorded to the rebuild in Nehemiah 3. If we even look a step further, a rebuild is so much more than a building project. Right, Mary? Right, Gail? It's so much more of this than, than just the project itself. It's also a faith thing, a follower of Jesus thing. See, a repair. Repair is used 35 times in chapter 3 and has the idea, check this out, of strengthening, of encouraging, and making something stronger. Ephesians 4.12, the purpose of, for the church is for the equipping of the saints. We come together to strengthen one another and be strong so we can live our lives for Jesus and serve him outside the gatherings of the church. Build up and repair. That is chapter three, it completely in a nutshell. But it's so much more than a building project because God is also building up his people. He's repairing them. He is building a foundation. So it goes hand in hand. The faith is coming. The building project's coming. They go together. One ain't going to work without the other. So God can use very few gifts, right? When I first started following Christ, I didn't know what, what I was good at. I didn't know if he was calling me into leadership and what I was going to be good at. I mean, I had to dig in. I had to serve. I had to find out what I was good at because I had never been in a role like that. But God can use few gifts, and he can use little talent, few gifts and little talent. Most of the people in this building project in chapter 3 did not have an HGTV show or lived in Maine with the Maine Cabin Masters, right? Right, Gail? They didn't, they didn't do that. They had never done anything like this before. But they all had something in common, and we have that in common too if we choose this. And that is being available. Doesn't matter what your talents are, if you, if you can build stuff or whatever your gifts and talents are. The key ingredient here is that you are available. The, the Jews here, the kingdom of God, the folks here to rebuild the city and rebuild the kingdom of God were available and they went. Okay, so that brings us to Nehemiah 4 and I am pumped to do this. You guys ready? Hit your neighbor over there and tell them that you're ready because I'm ready. When Sambal... Ballot heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. Incensed, and, and uh, you know it's funny to see some of the words that, that God uses here. 
but was greatly incensed. That means he was angry. He was mad. He was ticked off seeing this building project. And he's seeing the wall being built. So he was angry. He ridiculed the Jews. And in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble burned as they are? Toby the Ammonite, who was at his side, said, what are they building? Even a fox climbed up on it. It would break down the walls of their stones. See, he was beyond angry. They mocked the Jews. Scorn and in intimidation, sarcasm, right? This is all bundled into this. Feeble Jews, listen to the words. Feeble Jews, will they, will they, will God rebuild the wall in a day? You see the, the pattern that they're here? People often attack by being discouraged through criticism. That's right. When you criticize someone, you're bringing them down and you give them discouragement, right? Criticize them. As followers of Christ and as leaders, we must measure accurately criticism. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It could be something big. It could be something small. It could be at work. It could be at church. It could be on your team. If you start something new, or something God is calling you to do, right? If God is calling you to something to do, there will be criticism. People measure that criticism, but God does not criticize us. So measure that criticism by God's standards and not by people, right? Jer Jeremiah is Nehemiah is telling us that right here. Criticism and discouragement believes the worst, in people. They are both farthest from faith. People who are in these places never see what God is doing. This is Satan's sweet spot. It's discouraged. Okay? Nehemiah 4 says, Hear us, O God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in a land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from their sight for they have thrown insults in the face of the builders that's he's really saying in God's face because we are the builders and you are the general contractor for they have thrown insults in the face of the builders so verse 6 we rebuilt the wall to all of it reached half its height half high for the people worked with all their heart Nehemiah went straight to God when the people started ridiculing him and mocking him. He didn't have a debate with them. He didn't form a church committee about it. He went to prayer. And that should be our first line of defense when we have criticism and somebody offering discouragement to us and trying to keep us from doing what it is that we're set out to do. Fatigue and discouragement was about to set in. Nehemiah knew this. So much work had been done, but there was so much more to do. Verse seven or verse six. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height for the people worked with all their heart. Isn't that amazing though? I mean, isn't it so true that when we work at something with all of our heart, we take extra pride in, in, in what we're doing and how we're building it and what we're construction. I mean, I, I look at this room and I can sit back and look at it now and yeah, I can see some of the errors in places that I missed or maybe the paint got a little somewhere that it shouldn't have or whatever the case, or maybe the floor didn't come out exactly perfect when I put the floor in, you know, a year ago. But I take pride in this because I did this. You know, it's not something I really like doing is painting. I actually hate painting. But when I look down and I see the paint and I see the floor and I see how everything comes together, I mean, it's it, it, you take pride in the things that you really want to do. It would have been easier to just to pay somebody to do it and had it done. Uh, believe me, I wouldn't have been sore and all that kind of stuff because I'm getting old. But you, people take pride when they work with all their heart. That government stimulus check is not going to do squat for you in this area. You're going to take that money and do something with it. Probably something stupid. Most people just spend it. They don't pay a bill in because we're all in debt up to our eyeballs. But when we work for something, hard work works. The people of God know this. Oh my gosh. Okay, enough about that. Let's keep going. Verse seven says, When Sanballat, Tobiah, 
the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the men of Ashdod heard that the repairs to Jerusalem's walls had gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed, progress, they were very angry. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But verse nine, but we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Verse 10, meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of our laborers is giving out and there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Living a life for Christ is very much like rebuilding a wall. We have to talk, take the rubbish out. We have to take the garbage out. We have to discard the old so that we can rebuild the new. This can be a discouraging, but it must be done. Excavation. We have to dig deep so that we know what we do when enthusiasm fades. And the people of, of God are seeing this right here. Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of our labors is giving out. It's hard to do a long project. I, I'm not very good at long, long projects. Like I, if I have to work on something for a week, it's, it's energy killing for me. I, I'm a task person. I like to get in and get done. I like to just knock stuff out. Long processes wear on me and it's wearing on the people of God here. And maybe it wears on you as well. The strength of our labors is given out and there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. It's excavation. Like followers of Christ, we've got to tear out the old so that we can rebuild the new. They are learning this here. Verse 11, also our enemies said, before they know it or see us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. Then the Jews who lived near then came and told us 10 times over, wherever you turn, they will attack us. Verse 13, therefore I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. 14, after I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Nehemiah had to remind them what they were fighting for. It's easy to lose sight when we are weary and discouraged. We have to keep our perspective. As followers of Christ, even today in our own lives, sometimes life comes at us pretty hard. It hits us pretty hard with some things, right? We get bad news, a bad doctor's report, family member passes, car wrecks, accidents, you know, whatever the case, whatever the news is, the addictions that we walk around with that we can't shake and every day we're screwed up something. It's easy to lose the perspective. But Nehemiah gives us a great reminder to remind each other of what we're fighting for. Your faith is worth fighting for. It's worth hanging on to God with everything that you have, no matter what is happening around us. He will provide. He has always provided for what we needed, always. If you're in a season of time right now where you're struggling with something and things are not matching up, things are not meeting up, there's a loss of employment, something like that, God will make those needs. He will make those needs. Trust in Him. Your faith is worth fighting for. I'm gonna read that again because I want it to be a reminder for you, okay? Just like Nehemiah says, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, and your daughters, and your wives, and your homes. Your life depends on it. Verse 15, when our enemies heard that we were aware of the plot and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to his own work. Each to his own work. This was actually, let me read that one more time because I, I want to make a point here. When our enemies heard that we were aware of the plot and that God had frustrated it, God had frustrated them, their plot, their planning, the thing that they were going to do. God had frustrated them. We all turn, return to the wall, each to his own work. See, this was the victory. And they didn't even know it. Victory. They didn't even have a clue that they had lost the battle. 
God's kingdom already pushed forward because he frustrated the other side. He agitated them. He aggravated them. He frustrated them. They confused them. See, sometimes the enemy wants us to quit. Hand it over without even a fight. Hand it out on a silver platter by getting back to work. That's what they did. God took their part. They got back to work. They declared victory over the enemy. They declared victory over the critics, the mockers, and the discouragers. Verse 16. From that day on, Half of my men did the work while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. It's probably a pain to be carrying that big heavy thing around, right? Or having some kind of armor on and you're working with one hand. When you need to, but you got to protect. They were protecting themselves at all times. But the man who sounded the trumpet, he stayed with Nehemiah. Then, verse 19, I said to the nobles, the officials, and to the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out, and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. He's pulling his team together. He's giving them focus. He's telling them instructions on what to do if this happens. We have to, everyone's got to have a plan with this kind of stuff, even in our own lives. Verse 21. So we continued to work with half the men holding spears from the first light of dawn to the stars came out. That's a long day right there. 22. At that time, I also said to the people, have every man and his helper stay inside Jerusalem at night so that they can serve us as guards by night and workmen by day. Neither I nor my brothers nor my men nor the guards with me took off their clothes. Each had his weapon, even when he went for war. See, Nehemiah and God's people were always ready. They made themselves available. They never took off their clothes. Now, th that sounds weird. I read that and I had to really think about what that actually means. But what it really means is, no, they didn't shower with their clothes on, Mary. They were always prepared. They were ready. We have to be ready today because God is doing something in this world today. Pastor Thad said last week in his email that he sends out every Monday that the harvest is upon us. See, even in this darkest time, even with everything that's negative and bad and, and we're isolated and people are dying by thousands and the virus is just keeping our businesses shut down and the world from traveling and doing what we want, God is still doing something. Even in this season of time, keep the faith. It's worth fighting for. It's worth being ready for. The devil wants us focused on the news and the politics and Fauci and his triple mask and the virus and the scared being isolated. He, that's where the devil has us, and discouraged. That's what the people against Nehemiah were doing. They were keeping him discouraged. They were mocking him. They were taking down his leadership. They were criticizing him. And thus, it was discouraging the people. But Nehemiah was a great leader and he focused the people on what was at stake. He reminded them that we're not here for ourselves. We're here for our families. We're here to fight for our freedom. We're here to fight for our families, our homes, and our nation. God will fight with us. See, God is rebuilding the wall and the foundation. And Nehemiah is doing that today. Amen? Did you receive today's message? I, I hope you did. I'm excited for what's ahead because Nehemiah 5 has got some really cool stuff in it. So... The foundation is building. I hope you guys can feel it. I hope you guys can trust it. I hope you guys are digging into it. I know there are times when you're, we're weary. I'm weary at times. There's a lot to, to, that weighs on uh, everyone's heart, but we got to stay focused. Let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word always making a way for us, always explaining things over to us. We may not understand right now, but we will understand at some point because your word is truth. And that is the root. That is the heart. That's in our spirit that we need to know and hold on to the truth. 
Thank you for Nehemiah and his building project, the examples that he's given us, the leadership that he has given us as an example, and being a great man and a great follower and a man of prayer. Before any of this even started, there were four months of prayer before he even told anybody. May we be more like Nehemiah in our walk this week, praying over the things and the people around us, the situations, the struggles. Lord, help us. Be with us. You are always with us, but be even closer than you are today in our lives. I thank you for my brothers and sisters on the other side who are watching this video. I pray that there is some encouragement that's here, that there was something that I said through, through me, for you, from you, that would help them in some way. Small or big, doesn't matter. We cannot focus on small beginnings and expect great things to hit us right from the start. Focus on what the mission is, Lord. The harvest is plentiful. May we be available and willing to do the work. Hard work works. It's in Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. I hope you guys got it good. It's 31 minutes in. I hope you guys have a great week. Mary, I'm going to finish the rest of my coffee here. And I hope everyone is well. Stay well. Uh, comment below if you have any suggestions or if you want me to change the, <laughs> the blue, black, uh, gray background or whatever it is that you want. Uh, I'm going to stay focused on doing what God's want me to do. I hope. I pray. And I hope this message ended much better than last week. Okay. All right. Love you guys. Peace out.